Hi everyone, it's Misty and Kim from Mimi's Wig Boutique in Dallas, Texas. And today we wanted to show you what you're supposed to do when you get a wig in the mail and you've never worn a wig and you get the box and you're like, what now? What do I do? You know, you've probably overloaded yourself with information, you've been online, but reality kind of sets in when it comes in the mail. Right, and this is all kind of inspired because we got an email from one of our clients who's going through chemo, and she she did all her research, she picked out the wig she wanted, she ordered it, she opened the box, and she said she was so intimidated. Mm -hmm. And so we want to help maybe take some of that intimidation out of this because this should be the easiest thing in your life. Yeah. Whether you're going through chemo or whether, you know, it's just for fun, the wig should take the pressure off of you and not add to it. So we're going to show you that. So so we're going to try to hit this from all angles, whether you have hair or, or you don't. Um, so I'm, we'll show you how we put our hair up and then we'll pull the wigs out of the box and show you what to do from there. Right. So obviously we both have a head full of hair. Um, if you are going through chemo, you know, there's always that question, am I going to shave my head, <clears throat> excuse me, or am I not? That's very personal and it's up to you. Some chemo treatments, you just thin and so there's really no need to shave it all off. Some of the treatments, you are going to lose it all and usually when you have those treatments, you lose it really fast. And so out of all the years that we've done this, we ask a lot of questions to get a lot of advice from clients. The best thing that we've heard is it's take it off because you can't control it that way. And if you don't, then you can't control how much you're losing day by day and you're waking up. And plus, if you just get rid of it, it takes all of that kind of alleviate, uh, that kind of sensitivity out of your scalp and all that. But the one thing to remember if you do shave is don't go all the way to the scalp don't, you know, just take a razor and go at it like maybe a man would who, who wants to be bald. You want to leave some of that hair there because you don't want to take the chance of anything, maybe an ingrown hair. Because the truth of it is, my, my mom went through chemo. She didn't lose all her gray hairs, and so they kept growing. So if you take that all the way to the scalp and you have some hairs that are still going to keep growing, if you get it infected, you just, that's another issue you don't want to deal with. And so usually if you're going to shave, we say no lower than a two or three guard. And actually we say clip. Yeah, clip. Don't, I, cause some people say shave, clip, you know, buzz, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, so that's if you're going to do that. So from here on out, it's going to be about hair. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, I didn't get my wig grip. You can start talking about yours while I get mine. Okay. So. There is no right or wrong on um, how you get your hair up. It's whatever works for you. And so there's a lot of different ways to do it. We're just going to show you what we do. Um, one of the other stylists here that has a ton of hair, she will actually do braids and then kind of twist them in the back and pull them up. Uh, so there's all kinds of options. This is just what we personally do for our wigs. So I start... I section my hair in three sections. So I take a top section. I'm not nearly as neat about mine. Kim's all organized. I get these clips. Um, they're just cheap clips. They're, I like them because they're curved. Um, so that way you, you don't have, you know, your head's curved. So you want something curved that's going to fit your head. So I just take this and I twist it. Make like a little bun and then stick a clip in it. And I do the same thing, only I just section mine just by hand because. Yeah, I mean, you're going to cover it up. So it does not have to look good at all. So don't worry about being all neat about it. Do the same thing back here. I just split the back in two sections. Again, make like a little bun, try to flatten it out, put a clip on, snap it, and then we do the same thing on the other side. I use four, is that what you use? I use three. Three. I use four um, because I do my, my sides here are a little bit uh, thicker than I think Kim's are, so um, because I don't have as many layers. So I do one here and one here, and then two in the back. And on this last clip, I try to clip 
a little bit of this part, this hair here, in with this clip. You don't need much, but it, it just makes it feel a little bit more secure for me. Then I get my Milano wig grip. Same, same thing. <laughs> just mine's not as neat. And put it on that white label on the right side of your head where you can see it in the mirror. And then Velcro very low at the base of your neck. Now the thing about the wig grip is it, it works a very specific way. You have to put it on right or it won't work. So you've got, for the Milanos, you've got to have that white label on the right side of your head and Velcro in the back. Yes. The other thing is, this will not work on top of your hair. Mm -hmm. So it works from underneath your hair. It really needs your hairline to grip to because of the way the hair is positioned. If you put it on top of your hair with your hair down, it's just gonna slide right up and it's not gonna mm -hmm. work right. So, all right. Now we so now you've we've gone through all this whether you have hair whether you don't have hair you get the mail your wig is in the mail you get hair mail hair mail so this is what you're getting we're using both John Renaults um the specific question I had from our client was about a January so I picked a January and I know you can't see that because of the the lighting but um this is what you get and so I picked something straighter so I'm gonna put Amelia on so when you open the box. John Renault puts this little pamphlet right on top. This has some information and a hair care and styling guide. This, I cannot stress this enough. They use one thing for all of their wigs. They carry synthetic and human hair. So these little things are going to have instructions for both. So when and, you, and heat defiant, sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, and HD fiber. So if you get on here, make sure you're looking at the section. The, the black section is for synthetic. The little green section is for their human hair. And then the back is for HD. So you've got to read the right instructions for the right fiber that you got. If you just glance at it and it says you can use 350 degrees on it, but you've got a regular synthetic fiber, you're going to ruin it in a second. So yeah. read these. <laughs> So January's got curl, Amelia is straight, so we thought we'd show both. So this is what it looks like when you open the box. They come bobby pinned in to this little side, I guess just because of shifting in the uh, shipping process. So just un bobby pin it. When we ship ours out, we take the netting off and we inspect every wig before we ship it out for some of the reasons we're going to show you today. We want to make sure the wig's hanging right before we ship it to you. Yes. And so they all are going to come inside out with the netting on the inside. So just, you're never going to need that again. Yeah, it depends on the Mine wasn't inside out. Oh, yours wasn't? Well, yeah. It depends on the style. Sorry. So one of the things that she um, mentioned in the email was that this came with a zigzag parting. And it had like, I don't remember her words exactly. Ringlets. Or yeah, just um, just the curls that she wanted more of a beachy wave look. So, and when she saw it like this, she just kind of used her fingers, which is great to use. But sometimes just doing your fingers won't separate those curls enough. So, the first thing I do when I get a new wig is I just turn it upside down and shake it really good. So, just find the back tag and just shake. Don't let me hit you. <laughs> The wig slap. Right, the wig slap. And that just kind of takes all those curls and kind of just starts to begin to separate them out and get more of that messy beachy wave look that January is. Did that take out the zigzag too? It didn't take out the zigzag. So if you don't want the zigzag, which I'm not a zigzag person, use a wide tooth uh, comb. If you get John Reno Heat Defiant, they have these... Um, wide combs. I thought I had one here, but I don't. But it, it, if you don't get heat defined and you don't get a comb with it, any kind of pick will work. So just grab it and just start kind of picking back on the top. And I always go through and just pick all my curls out because I don't like that cl kind of clumpy look. Some people do, but I don't. I want it a little bit more blended. Soft. Okay, so this is the Amelia. You can tell, I can tell right now this has a cold set issue. Mm -hmm. by the way it's hanging. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shake it out and that just loosens up the fiber and then 
This does not have a zigzag part to it. Um, it's supposed to have a bang, and it does, but it's just a little bit messed up. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that we're looking for when we're shipping out is, do, is there a cold set problem? Is there something um, that we need to take care of, or do we need to just get a different one and send a different one? Right. So. And for some people, they may like the look of this once they put it on. And for some people, they may not. If you get a wig in and it has that issue, we're going to show you how to take care of it on your own. So, um, anyway. All right, well, let's put these on. Let's give it a whirl. And it's also important to remind people, what we're putting on is all regular synthetic fiber. We're not doing any heat defiant or human hair. Both of these are lace front, lace front with a monofilament top. Oh, you know what? Since this is a how-to video, let me just go step by step. So when you're going to put it on for the first time, you'll get your own system down. This is what I do. These are lace fronts, so the most fragile part of the wig is in the front, which is the hairline right here. So you always want to make sure you're not tugging or pulling or putting any kind of stress on that. To put it on, what I do is open it up and find the back, and I put my thumbs right where the tag ends on both sides. That way when I put it on, that keeps the back from getting tucked up, and it also just keeps it in line. So we're going to do that. And then put the front of it down really low. So the thing about wigs, um, you got to make them your own. So you got to treat it like your own hair, <laughs> except for heat, and start moving it how you would want your hair to be. And so then just just since I've been messing with the bang, the bang's getting better. It still has some issues, but it's getting better. You know, same thing with the part. If you don't like your part right here, that's the beautiful thing about monofilament. You can change it where you want. Sorry. Okay. So on step number two, you would want to line up these tabs. They're on either side of your temple. They're going to kind of hang different on every person depending on the head shape, but that you want to make sure they're even. So if you could draw a line in between them, they're in the same spot. If they're not, you're going to kind of twist left or right. And so you're going to put this down really low. So to get this back, since we have the wig grip on, it's not going to move. You're going to reach up here at the side where the temple is and just kind of lift it up and put it where it needs to go. And that'll go right at your hairline. And so she's what she's not doing is tugging or pulling on the lace. Right. You always want to grab it over here to the side where the, the wefts are. Yeah, the lace is the most delicate part of the wig. So this is obviously straight from the box. You saw it. And look how pretty that is. It's all soft and pretty. And you get that messy look. And you can play with it. Don't be afraid just because you have a curly wig to use your pick or your fingers and play with it. Um, because you have to make it your own. Don't be intimidated by the wig. I told her in my email to her this morning, you own the wig. The wig doesn't own you. So you make it do what you want it to do. Um, within reason, of course. <laughs> but, um, so this is January just picked out. And so if you feel like, I grabbed one of these because I thought we might want to talk about the, uh, John Renault, the Pick Me Up Dry Shampoo. This is wonderful for taking the shine out of a blonde wig. We're under really bright lights, so these wigs are shiny when they first come out of the box. Load them up with this. Any dry shampoo will work, but this is such a fine molecule, and it's, it's kind of made for wigs, so you can put a bunch of it on without getting that white kind of powdery, powdery dry look. So um, that's what you would do. Now, all right, so it's better. It's better. But it still looks like it's got a cowlick. I think it does too. Let's switch out. Let's, and then I'm going to show you what I would do if that if I got that wig in the mail. What I would do with it because I don't like. I can already tell you I don't like those bangs for me. And it's all about me, right? It is. <laughs> so once again, front to back, line up your tabs, and then see where your hairline goes. I have a widow's peak, so you can kind of see where that's coming through. Okay. See, that's so pretty on you, Kim. See, for me, I always have to tuck one side. But as you can see, just picking it out 
really just makes gives it that messy barrel look and this will look even better with the dry shampoo after mm -hmm. even picking it a few more times and and washing it so it's only going to get better so don't be intimidated i don't think we told colors this is 12 fs12 it's also known as malibu blonde and misty has on 22 f16 okay so if you wanted to have a straight down bang you really couldn't do this because the way these it's come out of the box it's really kind of meant to do that so unless you want something away from your face this is all it's really going to do so we're going to take care of that issue right now by using one of our favorite products blow brush this is the hot tools I've used this so many times we both have it's kind of worn off but this is what it looks like it is an all plastic barrel there is no metal anywhere on this at all so if you have one of these and you think oh I've got that at home if it's got ceramic or metal you will ruin your wig in a heartbeat so the only company we found that makes an all plastic one is hot tools um, which used to be Helen of Troy so this is what we're gonna do now when anytime you use this on your wig you want to put some heat defiant or spray conditioner on it I'm using the hair you wear restore which I it's my favorite so what you want to do is just spritz down the area that you're going to be working on because dry heat is, is going to be a little bit more damaging to the wig than uh, wet heat or steam so this is safe to use on high it's going to get loud but I'm going to show you how to make these hang see how that piece is just if you run your fingers through it it's just not hanging right so Turn it on high and just begin treating it like it's your hair. Mine doesn't need anything. No, yours is perfect. <laughs> January is perfect. Because <laughs> you got it all picked out. Don't be afraid to like, this is not going to get hot enough to ruin your wig. You can see my hand is right on there. So let it, it's going to take some time. Be patient with it. So let it kind of warm up kind of loosen the fiber up and then just start, you know, getting it going in the direction you want it to go. Fast what size blow brush are you using? One and a half inch? This is the one and a half inch, which I think is the most versatile size. If you go any smaller, <laughs> sometimes you can add a little too much curl. So, but if you have a short wig, then the smaller one's going to be yeah. better for that. So you can already see it's just starting to hang so much yeah. better. These bangs are a little, little too long for me, so I'd trim them. But it's starting to hang so much better. And even this side over here, see now it's wispy and pretty. And but you can even like use it. Just use your blow brush. I mean, anybody that owns a wig, I feel like, needs a blow brush. Yeah. It just helps put a shape in it. You're not going to get dramatic, but if it's, you know, see how that was. But, yeah, and it took that kind of cramp out, so like that one has that wave. You're going to do the same thing over here. have some patience with it it's been in that box for a while so it may be a little stubborn but, I mean you can see just what was that like two three minutes made all the difference in the world on how that's hanging again this would need to be trimmed for me but now we've got we've got the box out of it right so it took the weird crimps out it laid down that a little bit but the good thing about it is if you don't want to wear that bang next time we haven't done any changes to it that can't be undone so if you decide after wearing it for a few weeks oh you know what i really like that swept off the front get your blow brush out come back in and start going in the direction you want it to go it really See, allows you to do your own kind of customization and look and 
Yeah, and so that just took, I mean, just a little bit of direction right there, and then you could put some hairspray on it and go from there. Another thing these are great for is this under here. If you've worn a wig, you know it can get a little tangly. This is just enough heat to kind of come in here and smooth that out. And by doing that early on, you're going to extend the life of your wig because that's always going to get knotted up in the back where it rubs against your neck and your uh, collars. So start early and you can really extend the life. Right. So now, Kim and I just got new wigs out of the box. Got them like we like them. So you've got past that hurdle of being intimidated by something that's brand new. You know, it's, it's always like that. Kim and I talked about it this morning. You know, it's, it's that intimidation of, I've never done this before. I've never had this. I'm afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. The only way you can ruin your wig is by excessive heat. So if you put product in it that does something that you don't like it to do, just wash it. You know, so just, just don't be intimidated. Take charge of it. And I think a lot is the fear factor of, you know, I don't want it to look like a wig. Mm -hmm. This is what you do to make sure it doesn't look like a wig. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we advise people in the store all the time is the first time you wear it, don't expect to have it on your head for eight hours and go to work. Um, you need to go in little steps. So the first day, go to the grocery store, go to Target, go to Walmart, um, go to lunch, and just start building on the time, and you'll get really used to wearing it. I can wear a wig for 18 hours, never bothers me, but I had to work up to that. Yeah, and, so. and, and I can't because I, I don't wear them as long as her. So it's okay, like she said, to, to work yourself up to it. You know, don't put yourself in a bind to because you're going to start hating your wig. Yeah. You know, so get to where you love it and you're like, okay, you know, I mean, it gets to a point back when I did wear a wig more often, it's like when you don't have it on, you can almost feel naked. You're yeah. like, oh, my. So anyway, but so you're, you're to the point, you're comfortable wearing it every day. Now you have to care for it. Yes. So at some point you're going to want to wash it. We recommend every two to three weeks if you wear it all day, every day. That's eight hours a day. So if you're not wearing it like that, you can go a long time before you wash yeah, it. Yeah, just go by feel. I mean, treat it like the best item of clothing you have in your closet. You know, don't, you don't want to overdo it. Um, because just like a black sweater or a black shirt, the more you wash and wear it, the more it's going to fade, the more it's going to, the, the fiber's going to start to break down. So find that happy medium with you. I have wigs that I've had for a year or more that I haven't washed because I might wear them once or twice a month. So, um, then I have wigs that I wear all the time that are desperately in need of a wash right now that I just haven't got a chance to do. So just wash it. Now, get the products made for the, your fiber. Yes. Don't try to skimp on it. If you're going to invest in a good, high quality synthetic wig, get the products made for it. You will not be, I mean, you won't regret it. Right. So don't listen to the use wool light or use downy or all that. You know, I mean, just no. <laughs> right. I mean, it, I mean, wool light's not particularly cheap anyway, but, right. um, and the, the products are not that expensive. No. And they'll last you usually, I mean, you can get a bottle of shampoo and conditioner and it'll last you the entire life of the wig. Yeah. So, you know, you're investing in minimal products. Uh, we have, we sell two different kinds. I really am kind of torn, but I think my, my, my favorite right now is <laughs> the hair you wear, the cleanse and restore. This basic when it comes to styling products that's a whole other show but this is basic shampoo and conditioner we also sell the john renault and we like this as well we've used the hair you wear for years we've recently added the john renault um they both smell good they do uh and they both work really really well they're not overly scented so if you're really sensitive i you know what i love about the john renault is it's so creamy and the consistency is great um, I just haven't used it enough, so that's why I always think this is my favorite right now. <laughs> um, but this this actually is my favorite for putting on for heat heat styling. I feel like the genre is a little bit heavier. So, every um, two or three weeks. So, we have a video that walks you step by step how to wash your wig. We show us washing it and then hanging it to dry and then taking it out from drying and picking it out and putting it on your head. So, be sure and check that out. Yes, I'll put the link. Um, below in the description of that video and some others that are kind of 101 wig 101 videos to kind of maybe walk you through cap construction and all that um 
But if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us anytime. You can go through our website, shopmimisdallas.com. There is a contact us on there that you can, it'll get to us, or you can send it to misty at mimiswigboutique.com or kim at mimiswigboutique.com. Or you can always call us. So hopefully this answered some questions and kind of help you to get past that fear of wearing a wig wear it in confidence and just know you look good absolutely put it on go out don't go out you know fiddling and picking at it just put it on and smile and i guarantee you somebody will stop you and say oh my goodness who does her hair right so um, have a great day guys and if you need anything you know where to find us and we look forward to seeing you again soon thank you